Organization is key in this business. If you're not organized, you're probably not going to be successful. I see it all the time. Guys with a ton of potential, they got all the right tools, they got all the right skills, but they're not organized. They don't show up to jobs. They don't answer their phone when their customers call. And you know what? You know what they say when you go to school? Showing up is 40% of your grade. Well, guess what? In real life, it's about 70% of your grade with your customers, okay? One of my tactics to stay organized is to keep a notepad full of ideas and what have you. But I keep multiple types of notepads. I keep these gridded notepads. These have my estimates in it. As you can see, it's pretty beat up. Some old jobs that I've done. This one's over a year old, probably. You know, just different schematics in here. And that helps me keep organized when I'm actually fabricating and building whatever the project is. Like this one here is a little gate I built for a guy a while ago. And on it, it has all the measurements. It has a cut list. It has what everything's going to cost me. It has just everything. Subscribe! Ideas I have for it. Just lists. All right? And it's very important to stay organized, especially when you're doing fabrication projects. And I always keep my old fabrication project papers just in case I need to make another one of something or there's any questions from the customers or there's any problems in the future. Then you have this documentation. Listen, this is what I made. Here's the drawing I went off of. Here's the drawing you approved. And there's no questions. Another way you need to stay organized is you need to stay organized with your jobs. You need to make sure that you're showing up to the right place. You're doing the right tasks each day. You're not showing up to the wrong job because you got confused. I don't know about you, but it's really hard for me to keep everything straight that I have going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Between making these videos for you guys, between doing dozens of jobs, between welding aluminum one day, stainless steel the next, and then mild steel for the rest of the week, and then crack repair, custom fabrication, all the different facets of this business. It's really hard to keep in my mind everything straight. It's just, I get everything backwards constantly. I do have a touch of dyslexia, so that could be why that happens. But this is just what works for me. So the number one thing that helps me stay organized is right here. And I would suggest that you guys get something similar. Whether it be using your phone, a tablet, a laptop, or for me, good old pen and paper works. I got papers everywhere. And the reason for that is simply, it's easier for me to remember things once I've written them down. If I don't write things down, I don't remember them. I mean, I write everything down. Like if me and my wife have a date, it goes in the agenda. If I need to pick up some more oxygen and acetylene, it goes in the agenda. If I need to go to the bank, if I need to go see my CPA, agenda. And then obviously your jobs, what time you're supposed to be at a job, you know, what money I agreed on with a customer if it's a smaller job, the address, their name, their phone number, everything all goes right here in this book. I particularly like this book because it is a full day on each page. It is a smaller book, but it's a full day. So you have more writing space. So I won't zoom in on this, but I'll kind of give you an idea because I don't really want you guys to see this. It's very personal to me, this book. But I'm just trying to get, here we go. This is a good little example from December. You can see both days are pretty much full. I'm doing an estimate in here. I'm saying that I need to edit a YouTube video, a video that I was gonna do that I never ended up doing. Something as simple as get a gift card for Tom, you know, Big Tom for his kids. It, you know, I was getting him a gift because the, you know, the birth of his children was right around the corner and I wanted to make sure that, you know, my boy was taken care of. He can go out and get some essentials for his children, you know, which is something I always say, it's a little offshoot here and we're getting off topic here. Take care of your people, okay? If your boy's having a kid, or he's getting married, you need to go out and you need to get him something, okay? That's just, just part of, of maintaining great relationships with people, okay? And never expect anything in return. That, that'll take you a long way. So there's a little, little bonus life tip for you. It's not the most organized over here. Got my little Bulbasaur pencil sharpener. I've had that since I was a little kid. I got my little TIG section over here. So all my different cups, this is my travel box. That's why this one's kind of messy. But you can see my bigger boxes are really organized by size, tungsten, uh, by, you know, and then obviously accordingly to the cups, the diffusers and all that. And then down here, we have all the different cups. So that's just this little TIG section. You know, I got my acetone sitting right next to it. I've got my Windex to make sure none of my bottles are leaking right next to that. 
So I keep that all kind of in one area and I try to stay at least a little bit organized over here. And here's another way that I stay organized. This is a actually all TIG wire. The reason I have it in these plastic tubes is because it, they stay better a little bit longer. I mean, you're, you're gonna end up with, with wire getting rusted after about a year, especially here in, with Florida's humidity, but it does keep the wire. Basically what I do is usually just run a rag of acetone over each uh, piece of wire before I use it. But I have all different sizes, everything you could possibly need, you know, mild steel over here. This is all stainless and silicon bronze over here. And this is all aluminum back here, all my different types of aluminum, all my different sizes. I actually stole this idea from Weldmonger, Jody, Welding Tips and Tricks. But I improved upon it a little bit. Mine actually rolls, mine's on wheels, just in case I need to reorganize this garage. There's another quick little tip for you. If you're working out of a small space, put everything on wheels. Everything you see in this garage, when I film out of it, is on wheels. That's why you see it move around so often is because, well, it's easy for me to move it around. Quick little side note, the buckets are done. They're going out to our winners. Congratulations, guys. Stay tuned to the channel. I will be doing more practical giveaways like this. I don't want to give away bullshit. I want to give you something that I made that you can use. My next little organizational tip takes us into my living room. That's right. That's where I store my welding rod and my welding wire. Why do I do that? Because I have more control of the climate in here. I don't have any control of it in my garage or in my truck or anywhere else really. So that's where my welding rod ends up. I don't want it to all go bad. And as you can see, I keep a pretty good stock of welding rod on me. And that's just because I don't want to run back and forth to the store. The 7018 and the stainless rod, I try to keep wrapped up until I need it. The 6010 rod, well, it doesn't really matter as long as it's kept at about room temperature and the humidity isn't over, I think 60%. I don't know, I think it's about 50% in our house usually. So this is where it sits. You wanna make sure your welding rod stays climate controlled because you don't wanna end up having problems with it. The only rod that you really have to worry about is 7018. With 7018, you really need to use a rod oven. If you're not doing structural applications and you're just welding on construction equipment or stuff where if it breaks, it's not gonna kill anybody or fall down on anyone, then it's okay to store it in your, well, your living room and then go out and use it. Sometimes I hit it with a torch just to get a little of the moisture out of it. You know, sometimes I will throw it in a rod oven. It just depends on what I'm doing. Speaking of organization, it brings me over to this box right here. As you can see, I've built myself some disc holders. That way, you know, I can just go ahead and, you know, everything's organized. It's not all jumbled up like it gets. And they could just go ahead and pull off, okay, I need a little four inch cutoff wheel. You know, okay, I need a six inch. Okay, I need a five inch flap disc. Okay, I need a four and a half flap disc, you know, a grinding wheel, whatever, you know. So this is all right in here. Right next to it, I have an aluminum box, which is well, all stuff for aluminum. You know, I do do a lot of mobile aluminum. A little paper towel that got shoved in here somehow. But you can see this is all relatively organized. You know, this is where my PPE and my consumables for my grinder are, and also my grinders are up in the corner there. All of my face shields, really just the PPE in general. Obviously my respirator, you guys see this a lot. Gets a lot of use. All of this gets a lot of use. Yeah, this is probably one of my most organized cabinets, but I find that this cabinet is the cabinet I'm in most. And that's why I really stress making sure everything goes back the way I took it out. This is my welding cabinet. This has all of my welding rods in it, all of my extra connectors and different grounds. And, and just in case I burn up a uh, quick connect because I left it a little loose or did something stupid. You know, you don't want to have any excuses for your customers. Oh, my, my quick connect burnt up. Ooh, you know, they don't want to hear that shit. So, and then here's some tungsten in this bag right here. A little magnet ground just in case I'm in a weird spot. Uh, some more connectors some extra lengths of cable, and then of course all my rods down here that I use regularly. Some 7018, some 6013, 6010 obviously, you know I'm the fucking king of 6010. Um, yeah, basically it's just, you know, nothing crazy in here, but I, I do carry a little 6013 116th rod. It's the smallest welding rod you can buy. You know, you never know when you're gonna have to, you know, patch with some sheet metal. And I really like these because they come in these individual little bags with the silicate so that they stay relatively dry. And the 6013 is another rod that's pretty temperamental with moisture. 
All right, guys, and obviously the bed of my truck, you guys have seen that before. I try to keep my welding wire, my oxygen acetylene, my extension cords, and of course my miscellaneous metal and drop metal all organized. I do my best, but this is probably the messiest spot of my truck. Um, you know, you end up with a little cut piece of metal and you don't want to leave it on the customer's doorstep, so you just chuck it back there. I try to clean my truck out once a day. Sometimes it, has, it happens more than that, you know, just because you, I end up with a lot of drop metal or, you know, what have you. But anyway, guys, I'm Melt Metal Anthony. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you out in your welding endeavor. And uh, if you like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, and share. Otherwise, keep dragging around, keep pushing, MIG, and I will catch you on the next video.